In 2018, a Taiwanese robotics firm called the Industrial Technology Research Institute, or ETRI, unveiled a Scrabble playing robot that could play a full game of Scrabble by itself and announced they would be bringing it to the annual Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. They also wanted to have it play a three-game exhibition match against that year's North American Scrabble champion. Luckily enough, that person was me. I bravely agreed to travel to Las Vegas and represent all of humankind in the match. But first, I had to learn a little bit about my opponent. The robot is powered by its intelligent vision system, which allows it to process the physical board and distinguish between various letters and words. It can also precisely place letters onto the board using its robotic arms. To help it do this, the tiles it uses are shaped like cubes, and it draws these cubes from two long sleeves of letters placed on either side of the board. Once you make your move, you end your turn by hitting a button on a nearby console, at which point your score is calculated automatically and the robot begins its turn. I knew that this robot was intended to demonstrate its cutting edge vision system more so than its cutting edge Scrabble strategy, so I liked my chances to win the match. But this robot surprised me with several strategic twists I could never have seen coming. When I finally arrived at the conference hall, even though the robot is designed to be friendly, the sheer size of it was a little intimidating. There was also a crowd of journalists and attendees gathered around, but as a world-famous Scrabble content creator and YouTuber, that's nothing new for me. Once I sat down to play, I realized that I would be able to see the robot's tiles in plain sight, and also that I would be able to see the tiles that I would draw next. I tried not to abuse this to the best of my ability. At long last, it was time to play. In game one, I had the first move and opened with Event. The robot responded with Fleam, and after my next move of Non-Fat, it played Ching through the N, a dangerous opening with the A and E hooks, allowing access to the triple. Fortunately, I had the bingo of a payist and a huge spot to play it with Fleams, so I quickly placed it down, only to have the robot say, Oops, please follow the rule. We figured it was some kind of mistake in my placement, so I tried again. Oops, please follow the rule. Then I tried moving my word to a different spot on the board. Oops, please follow the rule. At this point, I was surprised to be repeatedly scolded by this robot about the rules of Scrabble. But after some discussion, we discovered the issue was with the robot's understanding of what constitutes a legal move. In Scrabble, we all love the S because it allows us to hook onto existing words on the board, pluralizing them. But this robot had been programmed only to allow words that played through tiles on the board. The lead engineer was worried that I would be unwilling to continue once we discovered this, but I saw it as a really interesting strategic wrinkle that I wasn't expecting at all. So instead of my bingo, I was forced to play Fife, hoping to hit a bingo through the E. Also, note that what I had thought were scary hooks to Ching were now off the table. Those plays would not be valid in this variation. The robot answered with a nice extension play of eventual, after which I drew yet another tantalizing bingo that I couldn't play, this time poetize. But I was fortunate enough to have another option of epitomies through the M to seize the lead. I then lucked into another bingo of Enotrope, widening my lead further, after which the robot made a very curious play, plopping down just an S to pluralize it for 22 points. At first, I thought it was breaking its own no-hooks rule, but technically, it's playing through all the letters of Enotrope. Had it tried to play any more letters to the left of the S, the move would not have been allowed. Next, I scored well with Towies keeping the Z, but immediately realized the importance of closing the open E and S. Because playing through the tiles on the board was the only bingo threat in this variation of Scrabble, blocking these valuable open letters was critical. So I next played Zeolite, blocking as best I could and scoring 36 points.
Towards the end of the game, I was sad not to be able to hook my S onto waging to form swaging, which would have allowed me to play Basque for a huge score. But I was able to find a nice play of Semina with several overlaps to increase my lead to 74 points. As long as the robot didn't have a big play from the S of Tawis, I was going to win game one. But I could see from its letters that it had three R's, so I knew I was home free. Several endgame turns later, I went out with Keg, ending the game. Or so I thought, when the robot threw another twist at me and demanded that I pass my turn back to it so that it could play its last move of Gur hooking Seminar. Apparently, these games would only end when both players used up their final letters, as opposed to just one player, completely changing endgame strategy. Thankfully, I was up by enough that it didn't matter. So, with one win under my belt, we started the next game. Once again, I had the first move and played the appropriate wordy to start and drew into travails. With two open R's, I had to pick which positioning I preferred, and although the R of walrus offered one more point, it floated an S freely in the middle of the board, as well as an accessible triple word score, making the other positioning much more defensive. Several moves later, I played Obvert through the E, which is normally a risky choice, allowing bingos on either side down columns J and L and a big S hook of Obverts. However, in this variation, none of those plays are legal moves, making Obvert an amazing defensive play. After the robot's response of Kitty, sadly, I had the huge 50-point Cats staring me in the face, but needed to settle for just Cat instead for only 14 points. Two turns later, the robot played Radio, giving me a relatively easy choice of Worm through the open O, at which point the robot made the extremely impressive play of Angle Worm, extending to the triple word score for 45 points. Definitely not a word I know or would ever have seen. But later, when it tried to pull the same trick by extending my fish to ice fish, I was ready to pounce with the Z for a 48-point piezo, effectively securing me the win. A few turns later, this game ended as a 364-309 to 309 victory for me, meaning I had successfully defended humanity from our robot overlords. You're welcome. Playing this robot was a one-of-a-kind experience that I feel incredibly lucky to have had, so I figured I would share it with you all as well. If you enjoyed the video, please consider dropping me a like or subscribing to the channel. It really inspires me to continue making fun Scrabble content. So, thanks for watching, and remember, keep your mind sharp. Ciao.